Okay. okay. Listen up. All right. We're going to talk now about the different methods of cellular transport. Okay. These are probably even more important than the parts of the cell and what they do. Because this stuff continues over when we start talking about um, the multicellular organisms. They are still going to use cellular transport principles, okay, even on the scale of a multicellular organism. All right? So the big three methods of cellular transport are diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. They are all very different from each other. Okay? But it is important for you to be able to recognize in a given situation which one would be operating and how it would work. So, on a, let's say, I don't know, unit example, I give you an example like um, a material is being produced in one part of the cell and it needs to be transported to another part of the cell through the cytoplasm. Which cellular transport process would it use and how would this work? Okay? You would have to recognize in that situation that only diffusion works through the cytoplasm. Okay? And that it is a process whereby materials naturally move from an area of high concentration, where they're being produced, to low concentration, where they're needed. Okay? Um, and that happens kind of slowly and isn't really targeted. Okay? That would be what I would be looking for, that you could recognize this is the situation where diffusion is appropriate versus osmosis or active transport, and here's how it would work. You'd have to be able to tell me that okay, in a written response question. Okay? All right, so let's talk about diffusion. Diffusion is the most common way that material gets transported within the cell, between cells, Okay, basically everywhere. All right, diffusion is the natural tendency of a material to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Okay, it is passive, which means it's free. The cell doesn't require any energy for this process to occur. Okay. And it can happen basically anywhere. Those are the upsides to diffusion. It's free. It's passive. It can happen anywhere. It will always transport from high concentration to low concentration. All right? But it's like free shipping. There are drawbacks to free shipping. You have to wait longer. Okay? And the more times it has to change direction or whatever on its way there, the more chances it could get lost, damaged, okay? It's not like, you know, if you ordered something and you got a tracking number and you were able to follow every single step along the way, you'd know exactly where that, this was free shipping. You didn't get a tracking number, okay? It's coming from the other side of the planet and you're waiting eight weeks and just hoping that it'll get here, okay? That's kind of how diffusion works. It's not great over large distances because it's not addressed, okay? It's not targeted, right? You pay for shipping and you know it's coming right to your house, okay? But in this case, this is, I'm sending it to your general area. You go find it, okay? That's kind of how diffusion works. It will go from high concentration to low concentration. And that means it generally gets where it's needed because where it's needed, it would be in low concentration. But it's a shotgun approach, okay? And by a shotgun approach, I mean when you shoot a shotgun, the little BBs come out and they kind of go in a spreading pattern, okay? Maybe a couple of them actually hit the target, but a lot of them don't, okay? That's the drawback to diffusion. Because it's a shotgun approach, a lot of it doesn't get where it's needed. Some of it does, and that's usually good enough. And as long as the distance is short, it works. A lot of it will get there because it doesn't have a chance to spread out. Okay? If, if you're not like familiar with hunting, you don't use a shotgun to shoot at a very distant target. Okay? Because it's a bunch of little pellets and they just kind of go everywhere and they spread out a lot. And by the time they get to the target, there's not many of them left on target anymore. Okay? Um, so it's 
not terribly accurate, especially over large distances. Now, is that a problem if we're talking about transporting within a cell? Cells are generally what? Small. As long as the cell is not too big, diffusion works great. Okay? Because it's not ever going to be a large, long distance for diffusion to occur. Okay? If a cell gets too big, it'll be a problem. That's something we'll talk about tomorrow. Okay? Um, so diffusion works well over short distances because it is slow and not targeted. Its pluses are it's free. Okay? Costs the cell nothing. Generally gets things from high to low. Here's the other drawback to diffusion. Because it is passive, the cell also can't control it. It is just going to happen, whether the cell wants it or not. Okay, that is the problem with all passive processes. Okay, we're essentially using the fact that gravity makes things go downhill. That's not a problem if you're standing at the top of the hill. It is a problem if you're at the bottom of the hill, because it might be going really fast by the time it gets to the bottom, and there'll be very little you can do about it. Okay, that sort of makes sense? All right, so diffusion, transport within the cell, high concentration to low concentration, it's passive, okay? It's good over short distances, okay? It works on the same principle as a fart, okay? If someone on this side of the room was to fart, we're not gonna say that anyone did, but if they did, okay? If you are very close, the experience for you is much more intense than the experience of a person on the far side of the room. In fact, the person on the far side of the room may not get any experience at all, lucky that, okay? Because the molecules in the fart travel through the air by diffusion. It's the same process, okay? And diffusion doesn't work very well over large distances because it's a shotgun approach, it spreads out, okay? By the time those molecules get over to this side of the room, they're so far apart that they're barely even detectable, hopefully. Okay? Depends on the intensity of the initial part. Okay? But you get the idea, right? It's a diffusion process. Okay? If someone has just put on like a whole bunch of perfume or cologne or something and you're standing right next to them, you smell them very intensely. Okay? But I might not smell them over there. Okay? Because by the time the diffusion has occurred, there's so few molecules left for me to detect. They're so much lower in concentration that I don't even know they're there. Okay? And I'm harder smelling, so I definitely wouldn't. Okay? Does that sort of make sense? That's how diffusion works. And so that's why this diagram is here. Okay? If I'm injecting dye into a swimming pool, where the injection happens, the dye will be very, very dark. Okay? But on the far side of the pool, I won't even notice it. Okay? because it's just going to spread out very, very slowly. Okay? But everything naturally does this. Okay? There's a natural passive process. Everything naturally goes from high concentration to low concentration. And the cell just uses that because okay? it's free. All right, so diffusion. Okay? It's passive transport, okay? and it goes from high concentration to low concentration. Okay. We sometimes call that down the gradient. good over short distances, like from one side of a cell to another, as long as the cell's not too big. Okay, how many people have heard of osmosis before? Diffusion of particles through semi-permeable membrane? Yes. Okay. In response to what? Okay, differing salt concentrations, or solute, let's say salt, general term, okay, on either side of that membrane. Okay, so what happens to a slug if you pour salt on them? They dry up, yeah, they shrivel up, okay? What happens to you if you drink lots of salt water? 
doesn't taste good, and you get dehydrated. By the way, don't drink ocean water. First off, it'll dehydrate you and kill you. And secondly, the ocean is the world's toilet. If you've seen Finding Nemo, all pipes go to the ocean. Never drink the ocean water. Everything goes there. Okay? Okay? Um, so yeah, you don't want that either. All right? Um, but osmosis is the reason why drinking salt water is so bad for you. Okay? They actually tell you that if you're stranded in the ocean, you're better off to drink your own urine for the first couple of days than to drink the ocean water because it actually has less salt in it. If you were dying of thirst, I'm not saying you should just do that for fun. Okay, but it's you know you want to stay away from the high salt that's in the water because for every liter of salt water that you consume, there's so much salt in it that your body has to pull its own water to get rid of the salt. Okay, so you ingest this highly saline okay, water and you've got all this salt in your body. Well, water naturally moves towards the salt, across the membrane, so it gets pulled out of your cells and towards the salt, okay? Actually further dehydrating you. And so you get <coughs> dehydrated faster and feel thirstier if you drink salt water. The same is true, okay, if um, you go to like, um, like a restaurant or something like that, lots of times the appetizers are very salty. Okay? You guys don't know this because you're not old enough, but if you, when you do and you are old enough, if you ever go to a bar, sometimes they'll offer free snacks like popcorn or pretzels. Because when you eat them, they're very salty and they make you feel thirsty. thirsty. So they spend a tiny bit of money on pretzels and popcorn and you spend more money on drinks because you feel thirstier. Okay? It's all osmosis. The whole thing is that you're ingesting this salt, you're pulling water from your tissues and making you feel thirstier. Okay? You are thirstier because you're actually getting dehydrated as a result of consuming highly salty food. Okay. okay, so what is osmosis? It's another one of those passive processes, but it only moves water. Okay? Diffusion can move anything. Everything moves by diffusion. Osmosis is only water. Okay, so if you ran into one of those questions on an exam, it's like there's you know this cell and it's sitting in water and water needs to go in. It's water. Water is going to be is going to be osmosis. Okay, osmosis only moves water. Okay, and it moves it across the membrane. Okay, because there's different amounts of salt on either side. Okay. Um, so water will diffuse across the membrane, okay, from the hypotonic, that's low salt, okay, to the hypertonic, high salt. In an effort to gain equilibrium. Okay, so it's trying to balance the salt concentrations. This is why if you pour salt on a slug, the poor slug shrivels up. Because osmosis is passive. That means your cells cannot stop it. It is just going to happen. And the poor slug's in the same situation. You pour salt on that slug, and the water just comes out of its cells towards the salt, and there's nothing the slug can do about it. So the slug shrivels up because all of its water is coming out by osmosis towards the salt. Okay? Like that's Why? a really inhumane way to kill a slug. Well, I'm not saying it's something you should do. I'm just saying that that's... No, because people do do it. Yeah, people do do it. You can also use it on a leech. Yeah, you can yeah. use it on leeches all the time. Yeah. You get on so you get a leech, leech on you, pour a bunch of salt on it. And it'll, oh, but you know, then they throw it up back into you, so you want to pop them off first. I, I, I just pull them off. I, I I'm old school, so. You don't want to just pull them off. You put salt on them and they'll let go of you. Okay. Um, but yeah, so osmosis is this passive movement of only water across the membrane to balance salts. Those are the three key points for osmosis. Okay? It is the movement of water across the membrane to balance salt concentrations. Okay? It is passive. Right? Which means you cannot stop it.
Okay, so this is actually an experiment that you'll do, I think, in Bio 30. Okay, you'll take a horseshoe shaped test tube. It's actually open at both ends, and you can put sausage casing across the middle of it. Sausage casing is made of cells, it's intestinal lining. Okay, um, and what you do is you put on one side, you put heavily salted water, and on the other side, like distilled water. And what will happen is over the course of a very short amount of time, the water level on this side will drop, and the water level on the other side will go up. Okay, simply because on one side, there's more salt. Actually, I did that the wrong way. It goes this way. Okay, um, but the water will move towards the high salt concentration, and the levels will change until the concentration is equal on both sides of that membrane. Okay, and the same thing happens in your cells. If I put a cell into a highly salted or hypertonic solution, okay, water will rush out of the cell, and the cell will shrivel up just like the slug. If I put that same cell in distilled water, where there's no salt at all, the water will rush into the cell, because there's more salts inside the cell. And the water will rush in until the cell bursts, okay? Because it's passive, it can't stop it. The water is gonna go until balance is achieved, okay? If balance cannot be achieved, the cell will either shrivel to nothing, or it'll pop, okay? Depending on whether you put it in a hypotonic situation, where the, where the concentration outside is less, Okay? Or you put it in a hypertonic situation where the concentration outside was higher. Okay? Making sense? Passive, water only, cross the membrane, balance salts. Okay. Now, active transport. Last one. Active. The other two were passive. This one's active. Your cell uses energy to make this one go. Okay? So this is the active pumping of material. It doesn't, it's not water, it can be anything as long as it's small, okay? Across the membrane, okay? This is the only one that will achieve imbalance. The two passive processes are trying to achieve balance, moving from high to low, okay? Looking for equilibrium. Active transport is using energy to pump material to one spot and make it high in concentration there, okay? So active transport is the pumping of solutes, okay, against the gradient. So the opposite of what the two passive processes would do. Okay, so from low to high. Okay, and one of the key things you need to know about active transport is that it uses carrier proteins embedded in the membrane to do this. Okay, oh, oh, don't back up. I want to talk about the diagram here. Then we'll pack up. Okay, so the carrier proteins, okay, they're just proteins, but when energy is applied to them, they change shape. So they effectively open and close, okay, like you see in the diagram here. Okay, here they're open, ions are coming in, okay, the ion gets trapped inside the carrier proteins, energy gets applied to the carrier proteins, and they snap to a different position or shape. Okay? By doing that, they close off and push the material in or out, depending on which way it needs to go, okay? of the cell. All right? So there's energy involved. Okay? Active transport uses energy, changes the shape of carrier proteins to pump materials across the membrane against their gradient. Okay? So you've got to know four things about active transport. Active. Okay? Uses energy. That's the first thing. Carrier proteins, okay, across the membrane against the gradient, okay, so from low to high, those are the four things you got to know about active transport, because there might be a four-mark exam question about it. Oh, wait, was that a lot? Okay, all right, we will leave it there for today. I will post your quiz for tomorrow at 3.20, same as always. It will be on. Cell theory and modes of nutrition. It might be a microscopy question. But basically, the first two or three things we went over. <coughs>